Ezekiel chapter 16 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, confront Jerusalem with her disturbed practices, and say, This is what the sovereign law says to Jerusalem. Your ancestry and birth were in the land of Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. On the day you were born, your coat was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean, nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in clothes. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things. Rather, you were thrown in, out into the open field, for on the day you were born, you were despised. Then I passed by and saw your kicking about in your blood. As you lay there in your blood, I, saw, I said to you, Live. I made you grow like a plant of the field. You grew and developed and endured puberty. Your breast had formed and your hair had grown, yet you were stark naked. Later I passed by and when I looked at you and saw that you were old enough for love, I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your naked body. I gave you my solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you, declares the sovereign Lord, and you became mine. I bathed you with water and washed the blood from you and put ointments on you. I clothed you with, with an embroidered dress and put a sandals of fine leather on you. I dressed you in fine linen and covered you with costly garments. I adorned you with jewelry. I put braces on your arms and a necklace around your neck. And I put a no ring on your nose, earrings on your ears, and a beautiful crown and your head on your head. So you were adorned with gold and silver. Your clothes were of fine linen and costly fabric and embroidered cloth. Your foot was honey olive oil and the finest flow. You became very beautiful and rose to be a queen, and your fame spread among the nations on your account of your beauty. Because the splendor I had given you made your beauty perfect, declared the sovereign Lord. But you trusted in your beauty and used your fame to become a prostitute. You lavished your favors on anyone who passed by and your beauty became his. You took some, or some of your garments to make gaudy high places where you carried on your prostitution. You went to him, he possessed your beauty. You also took the fine jewelry I gave you, the jewelry made of my gold and silver. You took for yourself male idols and engaged in prostitution with them. You took your embroidered clothes to put on them. You offered my olive oil and incense before them. Also the food I provided for you, the flour, olive oil, and honey I give you to eat, you offered as a fragrant incense before them. This word happened, declares the sovereign Lord, and you took your sons and daughters whom you bore to me, and sacrificed them as food to the idols. Was your prostitution not enough? You slaughtered my children and sacrificed them to the idols. In all of your, or in all of your, in all, in all your disturbed practices, your prostitution, you do not remember the days of your youth, when you were naked and bare, kicking about in your blood. Woe, woe to you, declares the sovereign Lord. In addition to all your other wickedness, you build a mound for yourself and a lofty shrine in every public square. At every street corner, you built your lofty shrines and degraded your beauty, spreading your legs with increasing promiscuity to anyone who passed by. You engaged in prostitution with the Egyptians, your neighbors with uh, large uh, gen uh, gen uh, genitals, and aroused my anger with your increasing promiscuity. So I stretched out my hand against you and reduced your territory. I gave you over to the creed of my of your enemies. The daughters of the Palestines, who were shocked by your lewd conduct. You engaged in prostitution with the Assyrians, too. You were insatiable, and even after that, you were still not satisfied. Then you increased your promiscuity to include Babylonian, a land of merchants. Even with this, you were not satisfied. I am filled fury against you, declares the Sovereign Lord. When to do all these things, acting like a barren prostitute. When you built your mount at every corner and made your lofty shrines in every public square, you were unlike a prostitute because you scorned the payment. You are the first wife. You prefer strangers to your own husband. 
or prostitutes receive gifts, but you give gifts to all your lovers, bribing them to become to you from everywhere for ill-sight favors. So in your prostitution, you are the opposite of others. No one runs uh, after you for the favors you are favors. You are very opposite for you give payment and none is given to you. Therefore, you prostitute, hear the word of the law. This is what the sovereign law says. Because you were poured out your lust and exposed your naked body in your prosperous security in your way with your lovers. And because of all your disturbable idols, and I beca- I beca- and because you gave them your children's blood. Therefore, I am going to gather all your lovers and with whom you found pleasure, those you loved as well as those you hated. I will gather them against you from all around and they will strip you in front of them and they will see you stark naked. I will sentence you to the punishment of women who commit adultery, who shed blood. I will bring on you the blood vengeance of my wrath and uh, jealous anger. Then I will deliver you into the hands of your lovers and they will tear down your mounds and destroy your lofty shrines. They will strip you of your clothes and take you fine jewelry and leave you stark naked. They will mob against you who will stone and you and hack you into pieces with their swords. They will burn your houses and inflict your punishment on you in the sight of many women. I will put a stop to your prostitution and you will no longer pay your lovers. Then my wrath against you will subside and my jealous anger will turn away from you. I will become and no longer angry. Because you do not remember the days of your youth, but enrich me with all these things. I will surely bring down on your head what you have done, declares the sovereign Lord. Did you not add luminous to all your other disturbing practices? Even other courts' proverbs will quote this proverb about you. Like a mother, like daughter, you are a true daughter of your mother, who despised her husband, her children, and you are a true sister of your sisters, who despised their husbands and children. You are mother was a hit. Your mother was a Hittite, and your father a Amorite. Your older sister was a Samurai who lived in. To the north of you, or north of you, with her daughters, and you, your, you, and your younger sister who live in the north of you, of you, with her daughters, was Sodom. You only follow their ways and copy their disturbing practices, but in all your ways, you soon became more dep- depraved than they. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you, sister Sodom, and her daughters, never did what you and your daughters have done. Now, this was the uh, sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor the, and needy. They were haughty and did detestable things before me. Before, therefore, I did away with, I did away with them as you have seen. Samurai did did not commit half the sins you did. You have done more detestable things than they, and they have made your sisters seem righteous by all these things you have done. Bear your disgrace, for you have furnished some justification for your sisters. Your because your sins were more vile than theirs. They will disappear more righteous than you. So then be ashamed and bear your disgrace, for you have made your sisters disappear. Sisters appeared righteous. However, I will restore the fortunes of Sodom and her daughters, and of Samurai and her daughters, and of your fortunes along with them, so that you may bear your disgrace and be ashamed all of you. All, all you have done in giving them comfort, and your sister Sodom with her daughters, and Samurai with her uh, daughters will return to what they were before, and you will, and you and your daughters will return to what you were before. You should not even mention your sister Sodom in the day of your pride, before your wickedness was uncovered. Even so, you are now unscorned by the daughters of Edom and all her neighbors and the da- and the daughters of the Palestinians, all those around you who despise you. You will bear the consequences of your lewdness and your disturbing practices. Disturbing practices declare the law. 
This was sorry to not say. I'll deal with you as you deserve because you have despised my oath by breaking the covenant. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you in the days of your youth. I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Then you will remember your ways and be ashamed. When you receive your sisters, both those who are older than you, those who are younger, I will give them to you as daughters, but on the basics of my, of my covenant with you. So I will establish my covenant with you, and you will know that I am the Lord. Then, when I make atonement for you all, for you all you have done, you will remember, be ashamed, and never again open your mouth because of your humiliation. Declares the Sovereign Lord. Ezekiel chapter 17 The word of the Lord came to me Son of man set forth an allegory and tell to it to the Israelites as a parable say to them this is what the sovereign law says a great eagle with powerful wings long feathers and full plumage of varied colors came to Babylon taking hold of the top of the cedar he broke off its top most short and carried it away to a land of merchants where he planted it in a city of traders He took one of the seedlings of the land and put it in a fertile soil. He planted it like a well of abundant water, and it sprouted and became a low spreading vine. Its branches turned toward him, but its root remained under it. So it became a vine and produced branches and put out leafy boughs. But there was another great eagle with powerful wings and full plumage. The vine now sent out its roots toward him from the plot where it was planted and stretched out its branches to him for water. It had been planted in good soil by abundant water so that it would produce branches, bear fruit, and become a splendid vine. Say to them, This is what the sovereign law says. Will it thrive? Will it not be uprooted and striped of its fruit so that it withers? All its new growth and wither, and growth will wither. It will not take a strong arm or many people to pull it up by the roots. It has been planted, but will it thrive? Will it not wither completely when the east wind strikes it, wither away in the plot where it grew? Then the Lord of the uh, when the, then the Lord word of the Lord came to me. Say to this rebellious people, Do you not know what these things mean? Say to them, the king of Babylon went to Jerusalem, and carried off her king and her nobles, bringing them back with him to Babylon. Then he took a member of the royal family and made a treaty with him, putting him under oath. He also carried away the leading men of the land, so that the kingdom would be brought low, unable to rise again, surviving surviving only by keeping his treaty. But the king rebelled against him by sending his envoys to Egypt to get horses and a large army. Will he succeed? Will he who does such things escape? Will he break the treaty and yet escape? As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, he shall die in Babylon, the land of the kings who put him on the throne, whose oath he broke, the oath he despised, and whose treaty he broke. Pharaoh with his mighty army and great horde will be no uh, no will be of no help to him in war when rams are built and sage are uh, sage works erected to destroy many lives he despised the oath by breaking the covenant because he had given his hand in pledge and yet did all these things he shall not escape therefore this is what the sovereign lord says As surely as I live, I repay him for despising my oath and breaking my covenant. I will spread my net for him, and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to the Babylon and execute execute judgment on him there because he was unfaithful to me. All his choice troops will fall by the sword, and the survivors will be scattered to the winds. Winds. Then the then you will know what that the I the Lord have spoken. The sovereign law says, "I myself have, a, uh, I myself will take a shoot from the very top of a cedar and plant it. I will break off the tender spring from its topmost shots and plant it on a high, mo- high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights, I offer it. I will plant it." It will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. 
birds of every kind will nest in it and they will find shelter in the shade of its branches all the trees of the forest will know that the law bring down the tall tree and make the low tree grow tall i dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish i the lord have spoken and i will do it ezekiel chapter 18 the word of the lord came to me what do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of israel the pans eat the sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you will no longer quit this proverb in Israel. For everyone belongs to me, the parents as well as the children, both alike belong to me. The one who sins is the one who will die. Suppose there is a righteous person who does what is just and right. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look to the idols of his tribe. He does not defile his neighbor's wife or have sexual relations with a woman during her period. He does not oppress anyone but returns what he took in pledge for a loan. He does not commit robbery but gives his food to a hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He does not tend to them at interest. or take profit from them or he withholds his hand from doing from doing wrong and judges fairly between two parties he follows my decrees and faithfully keeps my laws that man is righteous he will surely live declares the sovereign lord suppose he has a violent son who sheds blood or does any of these thing other things though the father has done none of them He eats at the mountain shrines. He defiles his neighbor's wife. He oppresses the poor and needy. He commits robbery. He does not return what he took in pledge. He looks to the idols. He does. He does disturbing things. He tends at interest and takes a profit. Will such a man live? He will not, because he has done all these disturbing things, and he is to be put to death. His blood will be on his own head. But suppose this. Uh, this uh, son has a son who sees all the sins his father commits, and though he sees them, he does not do such things. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look to the idols of Israel. He does not uh, defile his neighbor's wife. He does not oppress anyone or require a pledge for a loan. He does not commit a robbery, but gives food to the hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He withholds his people from mistreating the poor and takes no interest or profit from them. He keeps my laws and follows my decrees. He will die for his father's sin. He will surely live. He will not die for his father's sin. He will surely live. But his father will die for his own sin because he practiced an actual extortion and robbed his brothers and did what was wrong among his people. Yet you ask, why does his son not share the guilt of his father? Since the son has done what is just and right and has been careful to all my decrees and he will surely live. The one who sins is the one who will die. The child will not share the guilt of the parent nor the children parent will share the guilt of the child. The righteous of the righteous will be credited to them and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against them. But if a wicked person turns against from all, all the sins they have committed and keeps all my decrees and does what is just and right and the person will surely live. He will not die. None of the offenses offenses they have committed will be remembered remembered against them because of the righteous things they have done they will live. Do I take any pleasure in the attack in the death of the wicked declares the sovereign lord rather I am not pleased when I when they turn from the ways I and live. And if a righteous person turns from the righteous and commits sin and does uh, same disturbing things the wicked person they will live. Will they live? None of the righteous things that person has done will be remembered because of the unfaithfulness they are guilty of, and because of the sins they have committed, they will die. Yet you ask, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear you, Israel's, my is your is my way unjust? Is not your ways that unjust? If a righteous person turns from their righteousness and commits sin, they will die for it. Because of the sin they have committed, they will die. But if a wicked person turns away from the right uh, wickedness they have committed and does what is just and right, they will save their life. 
because they consider all the offenses they have committed and turn away from them that person will surely live and they will not die yet the israelites say the way of the lord is not just are my ways unjust people of israel is it not your ways that are unjust Therefore, your Israelites, I will judge each of you according to your own ways, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent, turn away from all your offenses, and uh, then sin will not, sin, then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourself of all the offenses you have committed, and get a new heart and new spirit. Why will you die, O people of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Sovereign Lord. Do repent and live.